from land to the sea and in the air and other components that make up the Deep Blue Project. So what is it? What is the Deep Blue Project? The Deep Blue Project is an integrated security and waterways protection infrastructure project. Nigeria loses more than $600 million per year to illegal fishing in her exclusive economic zone by foreign vessels. According to the West Africa Task Force, over 37% of all fish caught in West Africa are caught illegally by countries like China, Taiwan, Russia, South Korea, Spain, France and Thailand. Most countries in the Gulf of Guinea lack the necessary maritime equipments like vessel monitoring systems and automatic identification systems needed to keep track of illegal fishing activity or other illegal activities. There is also the issue of piracy. But before we dive into the many details about the Deep Blue Project, let's recount some of the events that necessitated the idea of the Deep Blue Project. And always know that you can support us by subscribing to our channel. And remember to enable notification. Thanks. On February 11, 2016, a petroleum product tanker named MT Maximus, loaded with 4,700 metric tons of diesel, was sailing about 17 nautical miles south of Abidjan, Côte d'Ivoire in the Gulf of Guinea. The 18 crew members on board the Saudi Arabian vessel couldn't wait to return home, having spent about six months at sea. But that wait to return to their loved ones would become even longer, as they were soon approached by two fast-moving speedboats. Inside these speedboats were 14 Ghanaian and Nigerian pirates, whose intention was to hijack the vessel and take it to the international waters, in order to steal its AGO fuel cargo. They soon boarded the vessel through the bridge and took over control without much resistance. They threatened to throw overboard or shoot anyone who put up resistance. The pirates, having taken over control of the ship, quickly painted over a new name, renaming the vessel as MT Elvis 5. They also took off the automatic identification system. The AIS is an automatic tracking system installed on vessels and ships alike that is used to identify or track the vessel. Think of it like the GPS on your smartphone. Turning the AIS off prevents the vessel from automatically exchanging information with other nearby ships. This will help the pirates to evade capture. But hot on their heels was the USNS Spearhead that was stationed in the region at the time. The Spearhead is an expeditionary fast transport vessel that has a maximum speed of 43 knots. It was in the region because of a training and exercise support. The spearhead tracked the hijacked MT Maximus, following it for two days until it entered the Ghanaian waters. They signaled the Ghanaian Navy to continue the shadowing of the vessel. The Ghanaian Navy did their own part until the vessel entered Togolese waters. Because the vessel is now drifting 200 nautical miles off Togo, Togo and Benin couldn't shadow the vessel at that distance. At this point, it looked like the pirates would have a field day stealing the 4,700 tons of diesel in the empty Maximus. Hope finally came as the Nigerian Navy turned two patrol vessels on their tail, the NNS Opabana and NNS Sabama. But first, they had to obtain permission from Sao Tome and Principe because the empty Maximus was now in their territorial waters. The NNS of Babana is a high endurance cutter that can stay out in the sea for 45 days. It has a maximum speed of 29 knots. On the other hand, the NNS Sabama is a gunboat with a speed of 28.5 knots. Meanwhile, the 18 crew members at the MT Maximus, made up of Pakistanis, Sudanese, Indians and Korean citizens, have endured 8 days being held captive by the pirates. Disillusioned by their plight, hope was once again restored by the arrival 
of the Nigerian Navy Special Forces with the NNS of Babana in the morning of February 19th. The NNS BS, as they are called, quickly opened negotiations with the pirates. The negotiations went on for about 8 hours until one of the pirates fired some shots from the vessel's bridge. The Nigerian Navy quickly returned fire, hitting him in the process. The special forces, thinking things might get worse, decided to board the stricken vessel. They quickly boarded the empty Maximus in a commando-style operation and within minutes arrested the remaining pirates. None of the crew members were hurt. Some of the pirates escaped with two crew members in another vessel before the NNS of Abana arrived. That vessel will later be found drifting off the coast of Benin Republic. The Cambodian flag tanker MT Dejiku was earlier seen in February 16th heading south from Lagos. It is believed that this tanker would have been used to siphon the AGO on the empty Maximus. The two crew members that the escaping pirates took with them were later rescued on hurt and the ship towed to Lagos. There are many of such stories that happened over the years. The cost of piracy in the Gulf of Guinea due to stolen goods and insurance is estimated to be more than $2 billion per annum. The Gulf of Guinea is classified just like a war zone. It's like when a container vessel or tanker is going to a country or region where there is active uprising. These add additional costs to businesses in the region. The shipping costs to this region are more expensive than equivalent distances in other parts of the world. These events are what brought about the $195 million Deep Blue project. With the Deep Blue project, everything will change for the better. It will bring the fight to the pirates with modern and state-of-the-art equipment. These equipments include 17 fast response vessels that can do up to 50 knots. Two special mission vessels. Two special mission long-range aircrafts. Three helicopters. 16 armored vehicles and 4 drones that are capable of 140 km per hour. The Takeover AR-3 Netray unmanned area vehicle can be launched from land or ships using a catapult. It has an endurance of 16 hours in the air. This will provide a round-the-clock surveillance system from the sky. The three helicopters are the AW-109 multipurpose helicopters. Complementing these aircrafts are two Cessna Citation CJ-3 Maritime Surveillance Aircrafts. These Cessnas are modified with the state-of-the-art ASIO solution by Bird Aerosystems. The Airborne Surveillance Intelligence and Observation System is ideal for maritime and land surveillance. This modified Cessna Citation CJ-3 is the first of its kind in Nigeria. Although not part of the Deep Blue project, Nigeria have recently acquired many state-of-the-art and advanced UAVs like the Yabon Flash 20 that can stay in the air for 70 hours while conducting aerial surveillance. Overall, 22 brand new aircrafts have been acquired in the past 5 years and 19 more are expected before mid-2021. The Nigerian Army also recently established Africa's only Cyber Warfare Command. While the Air Force has the Nigerian Air Force Geospatial Intelligence Data Center and the Navy, Nigerian Navy Falcon Eye Monitoring Center, all these commands and services working together will complement the efforts of the Deep Blue Project in fighting general insecurity and ridding the Gulf of Guinea of pirates illegal fishing vessels and other unwanted elements. The contractor for the Deep Blue project is HLS International, an Israeli maritime security company. All these ground, sea and air assets are integrated into the Central Command and Control Center in Lagos. The Command, Control, Computer Communication and Information, or C4I for short, is central to the operations of the Deep Blue Project, and the center runs 24 hours non-stop. This is a commendable project that will finally secure and protect container vessels, 
tankers and other seafarers in the Gulf of Guinea, and also the Niger Delta with its dense network of creeks and swamps. Although the Gulf of Guinea is not the only region that pirates operate in the world, they accounted for about 90% of reported cases in 2020. The other region that sea pirates are reported is the Singapore Straits, where 23 incidents were reported in 2020. In the same Southeast Asia, 26 cases were reported in Indonesian ports, and 12 cases were reported in the nearby Sulu Celebi Sea the previous year. There was no reported incident in Somalia for 2020. Okay, wonderful people, we hope you enjoyed the Deep Blue Project video. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and enable notification. Till next time, thanks for watching.